Hi guys and welcome back to the Conan Adventure. I hope you liked my last video. Today we're going to be making something even simpler for this lovely hot weather we're having. We're going to be making a very simple classic panna cotta. These are the ingredients we're going to need today. We've got 450 mils of whole milk, 450 mils of double cream and 75 grams of caster sugar and we have a couple of leaves of gelatin as you can see here, there's four, five leaves of gelatin there, which works out to roughly 15 grams, approximately, in gelatin powder. If you can't get the leaves from the shop, you can use gelatin powder. And with the whole milk, you can use whole milk. It's best to use whole milk, but you can use soy milk if you would like. It's not gonna change too much. I just prefer the fat content in the whole milk. As I said before, we, we're gonna make a simple pan of recipe, but with two different flavors, like we did similar to the ice cream recipe we did before. Check that video out in my, in my playlist. If you liked it, hit the like button, press subscribe, and today we're gonna to be making something very similar to that one, but we're gonna do in two different flavors. One vanilla, I managed to get myself some natural vanilla paste from the supermarket. If you can't get that, use vanilla extract or vanilla essence. Even if you want to splash out, get some vanilla pods. They're quite useful as well, and they keep in the fridge for a long time. We're also going to be making a cardamom and orange panna cotta. This is more of an infusion. Uh, panna cotta can be in many different flavors. It can be a honey and bear, it can be a strawberry, any flavor you fancy. It just really entirely up to you what you want to put inside. There's no right or wrong for the recipes. Just put whatever you want into this, the simple, basic milk, cream, sugar, gelatin base, and any flavor you fancy. So the first thing we've got to do with this panna cotta recipe is to soak the gelatin leaves, to bloom the gelatin. So what we need to do is get some really cold water. This is just cold water from the tap, nothing special. You take your gelatin leaves. If you're using powder, follow the instructions on the packet. Snap your gelatin leaves up like that. Place them in the water. That's the first thing you've got to do. Let them start to dissolve and do their thing. Never do it in hot water because it dissolves the gelatin and doesn't make it work properly. The next stage we need to do is put the milk, the cream and the sugar all into a heavy base saucepan. And we're going to bring that up to the boil. And once it's boiled, we add our flavours we need. So make sure you scrape out all the ingredients out of the bowls you've weighed them in. You can just weigh it straight into a saucepan. If you wanted, just put the saucepan on your scales, re-zero the scales, and weigh everything, the milk, the cream, and the sugar, into the saucepan. Everything in there, like that. And then this goes on the fire to come to the board, to the sugar is dissolved and everything's come to the board nice and slowly. Do not reduce it though, because it takes away the volume of your panna cotta. We'll put this on the fire like this, bring it up to the boil nice and slowly, making sure it doesn't reduce and making sure it doesn't burn or boil over. Whilst this is happening, we can get our moulds ready uh, or rings or whatever thing you want to put your panna cotta inside. It doesn't matter, there's no right or wrong. You can set it in anything you like, whatever space you've got in the fridge really to put this inside. And you can use any mould you like. I've got some Dario moulds here, I've got some rings, I've got these little smaller moulds, and I've got some little silica moulds. So if you've got the silica moulds at home you make your cupcakes in or fairy cakes, that is perfectly fine to use for panna cotta as well because it just helps to push it out. These are a little bit chefy, so we can make a nice little presentation dish with this one. The same with the ring. You can put them in the ring if you like. There's no, uh, there's no wrong way of doing it. It just when you just take the cling film off, loosen the ring and drop it out, it's very simple to do. Right, what I'll do is though, I'll show you how to line this ring with cling film. As I've done here, it's just a cling film base. Like we did before with the cling film in the vanilla ice cream recipe, or the homemade ice cream recipe, you want to uh, take a piece of cling film. Doesn't have to be too long or too short. Snap it off. Fold the cling film in half so it thickens and doubles up. And now you put your ring on top of the cling film and all you do is you push the ring down nice and firm onto the bench and you twist and pull the cling film round the ring. You do the same again on the other side, twist and pull and what that does is that tightens the cling film underneath, gives you a nice firm bottom and then you just push it against your ring like that and there you go. There's your cling film bottom it shouldn't come out of that and 
it's thick enough. It's not going to be red hot when the panna cotta goes in, so it shouldn't melt. So you can use normal home cling film. If you've got the industrial stuff like I have, you can use that as well. It doesn't have to be really, really thick. Just a simple layer on the rim. As you can see my cream has now come to the boil whilst my moulds are ready which means it's ready to go so what we'll do is take this off the fire and we'll let the, the other ingredients infuse i.e. the cardamom and the orange or the bay leaf and the honey depends what you're going to be putting inside. I've taken it off the fire and I'm going to let it cool just a little bit, not too much. You don't want to add gelatin to boiling liquid because it won't work. The gelatin, its benefits will just dissolve and they won't, it won't set. So as you can see now, the gelatin has, they class it as bloomed, it's almost dissolved. As you can see before, from that texture to that texture, it's really soft now, which means it's done its job in the cold water. So what you need to do next, is you need to put it in your hands, you just need to squeeze out all the excess water out of the gelatin. You don't want that in your panna cotta because that will just dilute the panna cotta, so all your gelatin or, uh, the ratios won't work properly inside the panna cotta. Then all that goes into there, and if it's not boiling, it will work perfectly fine. Make sure you get it all off your fingers, and then you just give that a good whisk. Right, now what we're going to do is we're going to separate the recipe. If you want to just make vanilla, just do it as it is, but over a bigger, uh, bigger range. So what we have here is vanilla, vanilla bean paste. We're going to squeeze a good amount of that into this bowl here. So it's roughly a tea, two tables, teaspoons, sorry, two teaspoons of vanilla bean paste in there. And then this is the cream, the milk, the sugar, and the gelatin. As you can see, I'm still mixing it and, and whisking it. Make sure all the gelatin is incorporated all around the cream and the milk. The next stage is, we're gonna keep that whisk in there. And the next stage is we're just gonna pass a little bit because I'm making two flavors. We pass a little bit so we don't get all the lumps if the non gelatin is not dissolved. I'm going to pass it into the vanilla. And then you have that vanilla flavour. So about half. It's entirely up to you whether you want to make more. Like so. I'm going to keep my whisk here. All right, and then I'm going to give that a little mix. So I've got all the vanilla paste on the bottom in my panna cotta. Right, you may be thinking, why has he got a pan underneath here, underneath his bowl with some water inside? What this does, this as it cools, it helps to separate the vanilla seeds, and so you haven't got them all sat to the bottom. So it almost like submerges them inside the, the milk and the cream panna cotta. So, just keep whisking it all the time to cool it down and that's just ice cold water underneath where it will just help it cool down and help separate all the vanilla pods from sinking to the vanilla seeds from sinking to the bottom. So my next uh, panna cotta flavour I want to do is going to be an orange and cardamom. So what you want to do is go grab a couple of oranges and a speed peeler or a normal peeler, it doesn't matter. And all you're going to do is you're going to peel the orange. Just like that. The peeler should do all the hard work for you. It's only going to infuse the panna cotta, so you don't want to worry about zesting it. Um, and all the juice here, you can keep the juice for later on, either for an orange juice in the mornings for breakfast, or you can use it to finish your dessert at the end. You just reduce it down with a little bit of sugar to make a syrup. I might need uh, two oranges here, so I'm going to put this one in first, and this half, and see where things go. I'm going to put some cardamom seeds inside. So these are cardamom pods. So they're husks with the seeds inside. So you need to break the husk first to get the seed out. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to tip it onto my onto my work surface here. You can put as many or as little as you want inside. It all depends on how strong you want it. So you could put them inside a little bag or a, or a sandwich bag and crush it that way with a rolling pin. You can hit it against your bench. Um, all I'm going to do here is I'm going to have myself a small little saucepan or frying pan and all I'm going to do is rock the bottom 
over the seeds. As you can hear, the seeds are popping and cracking as I crush them. And then inside the husk, I'll just get one which is popped open, are the little cardamom seed. And that's where we're going to get the flavour. So we're going to put this one, all these, into this bowl with the orange zest. That's all of them. If they're not broken, just give them a little twist so they open, just like that. So they all go in to this bowl, like that. You can add more if you want. Try your flavour out afterwards and see what you think. Now, I'm not going to pass this one into here. I'm just going to pour it in because I'm going to pass it all out afterwards. So just make sure your mix is nice and hot. Keep that to one side. Give that a little mix up now and just let that sit there to cool down just a little bit to infuse. The gelatin's inside, the cardamom's inside, and the orange is inside. You don't need to set, put this over cold water or ice water like I've done with the vanilla one because this is more of an infusion than a, than a submerged seeds. So when your panna cotta mix is slightly cooler, you don't have to do this method, you can just put them into the moulds as they are. When it's slightly cooler or it's just slightly colder than room temperature. You want to pour your mixture into a jug, like so. Make sure you get all the seeds out, you don't want to waste them, that's like gold dust because they're so expensive at the moment. And all of that goes into a little jug, just to make your life a little bit easier when you're pouring into the ramekins. We're going to do three of each. So I'm going to pour this one into here, you see all those seeds, it looks delicious already. Into there, you've got a nice full mould. That on. Once all your moulds are filled up and you've used all the mix, pop them in the fridge for about three to four hours, depending on how full your fridge is, depends on how quick it will set, and then um, enjoy your panna cotta. So now the vanilla one is done, this one would have been infused nicely for, for 20 minutes, half an hour. You can go for longer if you want a stronger flavor. I want quite a little subtle flavor in mind. So what you're gonna do now is, we're gonna strain it all off. And we're gonna decant these into these silicone molds I have here. And now we're going to pour these into these silicone moulds. If you've got the ones at home for the muffins or for the fairy cakes, you can use these as well. It just makes it a little bit more, uh, the phrase we use is chefy, just, you know, just makes it a little bit more effort at home. You can pour all these into these moulds here and just fill them all up nice and full. If you've got a little bit of mix left like I have here, that ain't going to be enough for a mould. So just top up all the other ones, just like that. It's just a bit of a different shape, not your standard panna cotta shape, but it's just something nice, you know, something different to do. Once they're all filled up, that goes in the fridge like the other ones for about two to four hours, depending on how full your fridge is. And when they're ready, they should just pop out, and then there's your panna cotta. You don't need to grease these molds either. There's enough fat within the cream and the, sh and the milk for it to pop out. And these are also silicon, so if you're using these sort of types of molds, they are already non-stick. So I'm just sure they should just pop out naturally anyway. I hope you enjoyed that video guys and hope you enjoy your panna cottas in this nice lovely weather we're having. 
Make sure you hit that like button and subscribe and I'll see you guys in the next video.